Hi everyone. Um, if you remember, there was a time when we did the um, Fair Eyes series where we had an episode focusing on the subject of multi term Fair Eye call. And uh, one of the viewers, uh, I guess his name must be Greg, said, um, Really interesting. How about a multi term Fair Eye followed by another uh, Fair Right? I guess, yeah, another Fair Right with a single term. So he's interested in if we have a combination of both, what would be the impact, and you know what lessons can we draw if we know the impedance curve. So I thought, okay, let us do an interesting case study to see the impact. So here we are, and uh, in this episode, we are going to uh, explore the concepts of multi-turn, single turn, and why do we. Need to care, or why do we need to take this into consideration when designing a system or a product? Let's have a look at the test setup. All right. Okay. Yeah. So we want to demonstrate this concept by using an ESD gun. We have our um, oscilloscope, 1.5 gigahertz, to capture the ESD event. And you can see this is really a simple, simple demonstration. This is just a metal case. And we have, let me just remove this uh, ferrite first, and you can see, uh, yeah, we have uh, again our uh, current probe. This one has a bandwidth up to about 800, 900 megahertz. Then we use a 20 dB attenuator because this current probe has 20 dB ohm impedance. And therefore, if I had a 20 dB attenuator, that gives me zero dB ohm in terms of the uh, impedance of the current probe. Therefore, whatever voltage I measured using the uh, oscilloscope, it will be my current reading. Okay, so that's easy. So basically, I have a read RF current probe measuring RF current, um, you know, on this wire. So you can see this is just a uh, normal wire. You know, we have a uh, metal connection here and the other end is connecting to this uh, metal case. So this metal case represents a product which has a lower impedance uh, at the uh, cable connection end uh, and you can see this this cable is just connected to the uh, metal housing via uh, the clock dial clip. Okay, so the idea is very simple. I'm going to inject a ESD Right, an ESD noise or ESD transient event on this end at this end of the wire, and uh, we're gonna compare, right, a multi-turn ferrite core. Let's say five turns of using a a, a, a ferrite core, then compared this result with multiple single-turn ferrites, and then see the difference, and then draw some conclusions. Okay, so. Before we do that, let's have a quick look at, without any ferrite, what the current uh, looks like when we inject an ESD pulse. Uh, notice that I set up a 2 kV, so not too much, 2 kV um, contact discharge. Okay, I'm going to zap it. Okay. Right, let's have a look. You can see the current waveform. This is really showing you the current um, that I measured using this current probe. So you can see that, as usual, the ESD event is a good example because it has a very sharp rise. So this sharp rise indicates a very high frequency content, you know, all the way up to one gigahertz, two gigahertz range, this sharp rise. But it also have this sort of like a, a hump. And then this one is a lower frequency content, contents, okay? So this lower frequency contents is, you know, represents hundreds of megahertz or 50 megahertz sort of contents if you do the FFT. So an, uh, an ESD event really is a perfect e example here because it has both the high frequency content and low fre frequency content. Okay, so now let's test a multi turn ferrite core. Okay, so I had a, um, again, a ferrite core from ferrite, and again, this is 6 1 material. So in terms of frequency response all the way up to one gigahertz. So I'm going to put in here and I'm going to do, so that's one turn, that's two turn, that's a three turn, that's a four turn, 
let's do let's see if we can do a five turn okay that's four turn already and we do one more five turn okay so that's a five turn ferrite okay so you can see five turn ferrite and then this cable is shortened because of the multiple turn so let's zap it again put it in here right and okay let's zap it okay so you can see from the result okay so this is a five turn ferrite ferrite five turn ferrite if we look at um again both the high frequency content and low frequency content so you remember now the low frequency content the peak of this uh, hump resonance hump is about two amps because we said right now it is one amps per division so the peak is roughly two divisions so that's two amps and the higher frequency content we're seeing lots of resonance okay and then if the peak is about three amps right that's the higher frequency content we're seeing lots of resonance here okay right right Let's have a look at what if we have five single turns, five single turn um, ferrite, all using the same material, 61 material, and see the impact compared to, to this. Again, I can leave this because this is a 61 material. I leave this core here, and all I need to do is to put, because we did a five turn ferrite core, right? Um, so now I have five one turn. All single turn exactly the same material right so I have four of these smaller uh, diameter size and plus this is relatively big one and I'm going to zap it again to see to see the diff uh, to see the impact right okay so let's have a look put in there zap it okay now let's have a look this is the result of five single turn ferrite core. Notice that the lower frequency content, lower frequency content, previously we had about peak about two amps maximum, actually less than two amps, but now this is one, two, three, three amps. So in terms of lower frequency performance, this is worse. However, however, if you look at higher frequency content, which is really this bit, it is really, uh, you know, uh, lower now, so it's about one amp. And in terms of the resonance, it it is actually less resonant compared to the previous case. So why is that the case? Well, we explained right in the previous episodes that if you have a multi-turn ferrite core, you introduce inter you know turn to turn capacitance, interwinding capacitance, and that basically is your capacitance then. You know, you naturally form a resonance tank circuit, and the more turns you have, for example, in the previous case we have five turn, then the more capacitance you have. Therefore, when you were using a five turn core to do an ESD um, block, for example, you would have a higher, or you would have a resonance circuit, in particularly in a higher frequency range, and also we know that this inter winding capacitance basically bypass all the high frequency contents that's why in the previous case you can see the higher frequency actually the, the current you measure it is a lot more than this case whereas if we have all the single turn ferrite uh, uh, configuration we we are better off in the higher frequency range but in the lower frequency range we don't have enough impedance isn't it because we know that so really to answer Greg's question would a what would happen if you have let's say two turn or three turn uh, multiple ferrite core pl plus one single core ferrite core uh, what would be the impact let's have a look okay i'll leave one turn okay so that's a one turn configuration and i'm going to do a multiple turn here so multiple turn so that's two turn that's three turn that's four turn. Let's do four turn, right? Because previously we did five turns, and so now it's four turn plus one. Four turn plus one single. Yeah. Okay. Ah, okay. Catch the results here. So in terms of the lower frequency contents, we are 
again, um, pretty much two amps, and higher frequency contents also is less. So having a combination of multiple turn ferrite and a single turn ferrite actually gives the best result for a transient event such as an ESD. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this episode, and this is really a practical um, case study of uh, multi multiple turn ferrite core compared with single turn ferrite core. So I hope you enjoyed it, and let us know your thoughts.